16. I was going to read a lot of scripture to get us ready, but I believe that this verse of scripture will say everything that I've, I'm going to try to get out today. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse number 16. Jeremiah said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I think that would bear to read again. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, I'm so thrilled and excited to be in the house of God today. Thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit Thank you for the anointing of God which I desperately need. For we are so limited in our abilities. But with you, all things are possible to them that believe. So I'm asking you, Holy Spirit of God, to speak to us today. And Lord, we so want to worship you in spirit and in truth. And with your help, we'll leave saying today it was not only good to be in the house of the Lord but it was good to worship God. So, Father, with your help, direct our hearts and our minds and our spirit, and I pray that you'll help us to be filled with the Spirit of God today. Thank you already for what you're about to do for us. For all these things we pray and we ask and we desperately need, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for your standing. Worship in the Word. This is the greatest book in the world. It is no doubt a bestseller because they keep making revisions so they can sell it new and fresh. You know, many ads always say new and fresh and bigger and better. This is as wonderful as it gets. Wonderful is his name, the mighty counselor, the mighty God. He cannot get no better than he is, but he can reveal himself to every one of us and things become more real, more exciting because of things that God reveals in the word of God. Let me tell you how important this book is. Our government has tried to take the Bible out of everything. They've taken the Bible out of schools. Doesn't it seem logical they're trying to stop something special? For it was just a book, it would be no problems. No one would worry about it. They would just cast it aside. But because of its ability and because of its power, people are terrified about the word of God. For we that are saved and born into the family of God, it is the joy of our strength. It helps us day by day because as we read, not only is God talking to me, but he's helping me. He's encouraging me. He's showing me things. And in our Sunday school hour this morning, we were talking quite a bit about we that know God are overcomers. We're not dying in the way. We're living victorious. Why? Because he said, because I have overcome, ye shall also. So there are people who are worried about the word of God. Even if they're not trying to remove the Bible physically and literally, they're trying to remove its influence and its authority. I don't even know if today when people get swore into office, do they still put their hand on the word of God? You say, well, that is our national way of getting into office. You place your hand, but you can also ask for a Koran. And you can place your Bible. You can put your hand on a Mickey Mouse book. That is by your freedom of choice. 
But I don't see where anything other than this has any meaning. You're just grabbing a book and that's all you're doing. This book is powerful enough to change your life. It will help you find Christ. That is the start. And then as we grow and learn and read and study, our lives just begin to change more and more and more. Now, a question that I want to propose today is, is God going to allow this to happen? The government is trying to do a lot of things. We hear all the time they're trying to take away our rights as Christians. Thank God for the Christian Law Association that is fighting for our rights and standing behind Christians. I thought about this week and I was, boy, I was really moved and challenged about the power of God's word and how rich it is. I've heard missionaries stand and say, you know, there could be hundreds of people that share one Bible and they pass it. I remember when Brother Biggs was here years ago and they would get a few Bibles overseas and what they would do is tear pages out and pass them around. After the people had read their page, they would swap. I'll give you mine, you give, and they would try to read. Can you imagine what order they were reading in? It was so exciting, and they said they'd hold those pages like they were made of gold. It was that precious. America don't quite see it that way. We have a Bible, we call a book, and we go home and pop it down. Sometimes it might sit until Wednesday. Sometimes it might even sit until the following Sunday. So I want to offer up to God a personal sacrifice to him because I'm allowed to open this blessed word of God. You see, his word is prepared for his people. For you in the congregation this morning, it's just a much of act of worship for you to listen as the speaker proclaims the promises of God and then there's something more. Once we hear, our next thought is to respond. God spoke to me, what will I do with that which I have been given? You see, God's word is so rich and powerful, it's even as great or greater as a song that we sing in these hymns as we sing them to Jesus. When we sing out and give all that we are in that it's the same precept as we open the word of God and look for the nuggets of gold that God is willing to share with us. You are worshiping the God who gives you the message in his word by listening and responding to what God has said to you. In Jeremiah verse chapter 15, verse 16, Jeremiah said... Thy word was found. You know what that implies? It was missing. Something, and then I looked up something about Josiah as a young king. The word of God they found after some time was in the temple. And they got it and read it, brought it to the king. And oh, how as they read, it broke his heart. They proclaimed a fast. And they thought, oh, we have the word of God. It's like they were saying, we're saved. We've got his word. We'll be okay. Is America looking at the word of God like this? I know we used to. I heard one president said uh, sometime back that we were not a God-fearing nation. He was speaking for himself, not for us. Because we know that God is in our hearts and we do fear him with everything that's within us. You see, this verse is going to help us to worship today in the word. Both when it is read, when it is preached in church, and when I read it on my own. Number one today I'd like to look at 
Worship in the word involves discovery. Look what he says in verse number 16. Thy words were found. We've all made discoveries. That is, we've all found things or even learned things that have helped us and educated us and even thrilled us. Brother Matt and I, or excuse me, was taking my car apart. He was bored. He took my dash out of my car. We had to uh, replace the heater core. I looked in it, and there was no dash. There was no front of my car. It was unbelievable. And I said, dear God, I hope he can get it back together. And as he looked, he called me and said, hey, I found a lot of things in your dash. I said, such as? He said, rats, packing, and we found $11. I said, hallelujah, and he said, about a 1,000 pennies. Well, it sounds more like me to hide pennies than $11. So I got that $11 and thought it was so wonderful. Why? Because I never knew that I had it. And that $11 was so special, well, we just put it in the offering plate and gave it to God because he can do more with it than I can. Worship even in the word when it's found. There is no greater discovery for me and you than to make the things spoken by God special to us. Listen to what 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says. All Scripture, somebody help me out, is that Old Testament and New? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. God's word will inspire us. Why? It is God breathed. It is absolutely from the heart of God that we have this blessed book. Because if it comes from God, it's profitable. In those two scriptures, the Bible tells us, now, don't lose your place. We're coming back to Jeremiah. In these two scriptures I just read, it said it's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for repri uh, reprimanding us for our own good. He uses the word reproof. It is profitable for changing us. He said correction. It is profitable for helping us live godly lives. He said, instructions in righteousness. Paul tells us what we should discover in God's word. Following it will make us perfect and upright. Not sinless perfection, but mature in God's word. It is the very completeness and maturity of our nature to say, I'm not happy here when I could be here with God. We must move forward. It equips us and readies us for the good work which God has called us to do. When God saved us, he said, go. Go and teach them. So there's a tremendous work that has to be done. Discoveries that we make in God's word are not always pleasant. In 2 Kings 22, we were not going to turn there, but this is when the men, Shophan and uh, some other priests, brought the word that they found in the temple and brought it to Josiah. They read it. And as things being joyous and happiness, they all mourned and they wept and they cried. I thought so much, how long had the word of God been in the temple and no one had found it. But when it was found, when it was read... Church, listen, it brought such godly conviction in their lives, it broke them. It helped them to realize how we're not everything we thought we were. It's nothing like looking into the mirror of God's word. And as we look into this book, it reflects God and it reflects me. And up beside God, I find, oh, how short and how far away that we are. The discoveries can be pleasant, but not always. But at least King Josiah 
did something about it. If you approach this book today in worship, it is an act of worship upon your heart. You too, like me, will make discoveries that are so joyful in their discoveries and even the things that makes us broken will excite us because it is a discovery that I did not know about myself. There's going to be many convicting discoveries. There will be many life-changing discoveries. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, happy are ye. We wonder today, why are we not happy like the greatest people on the earth that know that our sins have been forgiven, our names are recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life, we're going to heaven when this life is over, how much better can it get for us? We can walk a little closer to the light, and as you get closer to the light, the light reveals more about each one of us. As we read the Word of God, whether at home or church, it ought to help you to find new discoveries. In church, when you stop worshiping God after the hymns and prayer, then you're not going to find any new discoveries while the Word is being preached. You say, preacher, you want us to start studying while you're preaching? No, I want you to listen. And then I want you to apply. And then I'd love for you to respond. You see, if you're looking to make discoveries out of God's Word as an act of worship, you're going to find jewels that sometimes you might miss. If we desire to find God in the Word, you will be worshiping our true and one only God. Number two, worship in the Word involves digestion. Look again in verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. I ingested what God told me. Now, every Sunday, Sunday school teachers and preachers prepare something for their class and for their flocks. During the week, your Bible might even sit idle because maybe you've not thought about it. Life brings many quick things. Uh, life becomes so busy. We get so involved and sometimes we forget but boy, if you can see that and it begins to burn in your heart that I haven't picked you up today, shame on me. I'll make time to open this blessed word. And each time we do, here's some practical ways that you might need to look at in order to digest his blessed word. As you read, he might show you you need to confess any known sin to the Lord. If you have any problem with anger for any reason, you need to digest this word. Ask God to help you get something from him. If you don't, you need to digest this word. Pay attention. Strive to follow the speaker or your own reading. Think about what you hear or you read. Be open. Be ready to be blessed to be challenged, to be comforted, or to be corrected. Be submissive. If there's a conflict between what the Word of God says and what you are doing or thinking, you know who's right and it's not you. The conflict is with us. Meditate on what you've read, and after you hear a sermon, see how it applies to your personal life. You may even want to reread the passage sometime during that day. And it would be wonderful to memorize as you meditate on God's Word. The more you meditate on a passage, the more God will continue to speak to you. Some folks are terrified for God speaking to them, for He might ask of them something they're not willing to give. Amen? Don't let it get too quiet. It might mean you're guilty. Amen. Some of us don't mind working out in a gym. Those weights and those exercise machines, they do no good unless you get on them. Amen. We need to have gospel workouts. 
A workout means you are developing muscles that you already have. A spiritual workout assumes that you're already saved, that you're simply developing your spiritual muscles. Amen? I'm strong as an ox. Well, I can't see it. It's all spiritual. Amen? Number three, worship in the word involves delight. It ought to be something special that you're looking at. Again, in verse number 16, he said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. Well, how many say that when I get through reading and put it down and said, Lord, that was the time of my life. Boy, you showed me things, and it literally brought a smile on my face. It was such a joy. Because you know if you're not careful, you can read, put it down, and in five minutes somebody can say, what did you read? I forgot. You know why? You wasn't worshiping, you was just reading. And just reading will not burn in your heart. Wow, how wonderful it is to delight in the word of God. And Jeremiah said, thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. There are some things that bring joy and rejoicing to our hearts. All these things that we've looked at today thus far should not ever have second place to my Lord or his word. They should be the joy and rejoicing of our heart. Psalm 19 shows us what the Bible is good for and what happens when the Bible is the joy and rejoicing of our heart. Now, you don't have to turn, but in Psalms 19, verse number 7, the Bible talks about converting the soul. God's word is used by the Holy Spirit to convict us. Also in verse 7, God's word makes simple folks like us wise. We can learn from the word of God. In verse 8 of Psalms 19, God's word is right and brings joy to the heart. Also in verse 8, God's word is pure, gives us discernment. In verse number 9 of Psalms 19, God's word inspires us to have godly fear. Also in verse 9 of Psalms 19, God's word is true and righteous. You see, it's God's words that's delivering us. In verse 10, God's word is more valuable than gold and sweeter than honey. It sounds like the very sentiments of our heart. As the psalmist reads, we could say, Amen, King David. That's exactly what I was thinking. In verse 11, God warns me in his word. Also in verse 11, when I obey God's word, there's great reward. When the Bible becomes the joy and rejoicing of my heart and yours, you'll want to read it, you'll want to hear it preached, you'll want to remember it, and you'll want to think about it. Now, when these things start becoming you, you begin to worship every time you open the Word of God. It becomes real. It becomes special. Have you ever thought one day that you would literally hate to close this book and put it down? I was, I was doing so well, God was showing me, I, I just don't want to lay it down because it was revealing and showing. Lastly, this morning in verse 16, the words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. And he said, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Worship in the word involves distinction. There's something peculiar and particular about God's word. The word of God should be not only the joy and rejoicing in my heart, but it should tell me who I am. Jeremiah said that he was called by God's name. That means Jeremiah belonged to God. Today, do you know that you and I belong to God? The word of God is quick. And it's powerful. It's rich, it's rich beyond belief. It can give to you what you're searching for. I'm needing direction. I've got something that's in front of me that has two choices. And God, you're going to have to show me which one is right. Because I have 50% choice of choosing. 
and one of them is not going to be God's will and one will. God, I need to look and find instructions. The truth is even more exciting as you consider once you've trusted Christ to be your Savior, you've received your new birth and have been born into the family of God. You've been adopted into God's family and you've been given all rights and privileges of the Son of God. Because of these distinctions, the Lord God of hosts, the God of the universe, has chosen you to call you his own name, children of God. What he has to say to us is of the utmost importance. This is, has to do with life and death. Have you ever received a letter in all your life and you read it over and over again and you hung on every word because it was from somebody that had a special place in your heart and you'd go back and you'd read it again Today, how much harder or easier is it to understand? Being God's child and being called by his name, you should hang on every single word that comes from this blessed book. He's talking to me in Genesis all the way to Revelations. He's got a message for me, and he's got help for me. He's got instructions for me. And if I follow this, he said, we Will overcome. We will not fall by the wayside. Second Peter talks about if we keep those things and practice those things, all the things that we add to our faith, he said if we keep them, we'll be overcomers. And he said if we don't keep them, we'll be as blind and forgotten that we were purged from our old sins. You see, that's what the word backsliding means. It's not mentioned too many times in the Bible, but it is there. That means this is where I used to be. A year ago at this time, was I more involved or less? You don't want to answer that by saying I was doing more for God than I am now. You know what that means? It means I backslid. It means I'm not everything that I used to be. I want to tell you this in closing. God hasn't moved anywhere. And if there's anything that's gotten a space between us, we have walked in our own direction and we've laid down this blessed book. And when this book gets laid down, we're not worshiping. It's hard to come to church and worship when the attitude of my heart is not ready and willing. Let's stand to our feet if you would, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the worship of your word. And as we find it, ingest it, enjoy it, what a joy in our hearts. And Lord, sometimes I feel like these altars ought to be full of people saying, God help me to put you in this word in its prospective place. I've fallen short. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And thank God for a time of repentance. Lord Jesus, I'm glad that if we confess our sins, you said you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if there's anyone here today that are not saved, oh, have I got good news for them. There's a Savior in heaven desiring to be part of your life. He wants to be your Savior. And Father, by your help and by the power of the Holy Spirit, there's not a one person that should walk out of here today who has not trusted Christ as their Savior. Jesus Christ said he loved you, he died for you, he took your place on the cross, and he is so willing to become your life giver. Father, if there's anybody listening today that's never been saved, would you help them to understand that by the faith that God has given them, they can repent and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Come into my heart and save me. And we know that the promises of God said, Thou shalt be saved. Thank you for what you've done here today. Help us to worship every time we place our hands on this blessed book. It is so important to our hearts. Lead us today by the sweet spirit of God. I pray that you have spoke to every heart. Once we hear, then we need to respond. What will we do with Christ? Help us, I humbly pray in Jesus' name and for his sake.
Amen and amen.